coach, you know, as we talked about pregame, the importance of defending Dame without fouling, you know, f for him to get to the line, shoot 20 free throws tonight, just how tough was that for, for the group to overcome? That was big. You know, he shot 20 free throws, we shot 31. So I think he does a great job of getting to the line, looking to, you know, he, can, he gets that call. So we just got to do a better job of showing our hands, being in position earlier, uh, just so, you know, we don't give them any reason to call it. We talk about in, the, in these type of games, the, the margin of error being so thin when you're going against a, another team fighting for, you know, playing spot, and, and that has a Damian Lillard on their roster. For your guys to experience those moments, guys like, young guys like Caleb to, to get to guard him in some of those switching situations, just how invaluable is that experience for the, those They're guys? great experiences for these guys to, to go through. Obviously not the result we wanted, but obviously we're going to learn from this, take a look at it on film, see where we can get better, the possessions we can get back, understanding what to do late game. Uh, but I think our guys had a level of focus about them during the game. But just the one thing is, you know, you got to defend him without fouling as best as you can. Coach, I wanted to ask you in perspective of someone who loves the game, who loves just watching basketball in general, um, what is your opinion on how games like that kind of close out where it's just a lot of fouling, a lot of the same play over and over again? What's your opinion on that? Is it, do you think that there's a way that that can possibly be put to bed? <laughs> can you repeat that question again? Like uh, in terms of the nature of the final seconds where it's just back and forth fouling, back and forth free throws, is there something that you wish that that would be a, a thing in the past, hopefully next season, where games don't end in that nature? I mean, I think that's going to be part of the game. Uh, I think, you know, obviously to get the advantage, whether you're up three and you decide if some, some guys foul, some guys don't. You know, I think you're just recognizing who does it and in those situations, what you're running, how to execute down the stretch. Uh, Coach, one missed opportunity we could see was just missed free throws during the final points of the game. Those were key misses. Can you talk about that a little bit? I think that's the level of stepping up in those moments, the importance of what one, whether it's free throw line block out, uh, whether it's one offensive rebound or the possession of blocking out. I think those are huge. Those are the little things that we continue to communicate. They've got to make sure we're doing the little things to finish games out. And that's the free throw is one of them, stepping in there with confidence and knocking them down. How did you feel about the, the paint defense as the game went on? I think you, they, you guys allowed 16 points in the paint the first quarter, but you know they finished with 46. You know, it's tough. You know, you're saying you want to get Dame off the line, you know, and so then he's not shooting threes, and so he gets in the paint. So those are a lot of those points that happen. So you've done your job of getting him off the three-point line because he's going to take a, a lot of them. So I think we did a good job for the most part, but then you have to go to the flip side of that and get him down there without fouling. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Jalen, uh, Dame obviously sh shot 20 free, th free throws tonight. You know, how tough was that to overcome, and, and how hard is it to, to defend a player like that without fouling? Uh, you know, I think that's just kind of the NBA nowadays, huh? Um, you know, these, uh, these all-star guys, uh, you know, they, they do a great job, you know, rightfully so, in drawing fouls and, you know, uh, creating contact and, you know, trying to get free ones for themselves, which, you know, I commend. Um, you know, a lot of them, especially Dame, does it at a high level, as you can see. You know, he shot 22 free throws tonight. But, uh, you know, it just kind of makes it it makes it hard to guard. You know, you kind of just want to put your hands behind your back. And, you know, it's hard to contest. You know, it's hard to be physical, hard to kind of, you know, show any resistance. Um, so it was just one of those nights, you know, we got to talk about it, go back and look at it and, you know, kind of figure out how we can defend better without fouling, you know, and do a better job of that. But, um, yeah, when, when he shoots 20 free throws, you know, by himself, it's kind of hard, uh, you know, to get stops and, you know, stop from having a huge night. So. Ron, so we've, we've talked about the, the thinness of the margin of error in, in these type of games, two teams fighting for, you know, playing spots, a superstar like that on, on the other side. Um, just how thin I is that margin for error when you're playing in games like these? Um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely a couple of plays you can point to, but just looking at the, at the box score, like you just said, they shot 32 free throws. Uh, honestly, we did a pretty solid job on, on Lillard, but except for the foul, fouling. So um, if you take 10 of those free throws away, um, you know, we probably win the game. Um, and, you know, all those free throws, they slow, slows the game down, doesn't allow us to, you know, run and get out and run and get some easy ones, which is, um, you know, how we usually want to play. So, um, yeah, very, very thin margin, but, um, you know, we're going to continue to learn from it and, uh, yeah, get better next time. This one could be for either of you on just from a perspective of 
guys who enjoy basketball, who enjoy the game, enjoy the nature of uh, those close games, those clutch endings. Um, what does it say about the, the state of the game today that, that games end with that, where it's just the same play back and forth, foul, free throw? Um, is there anything that you guys would like to see in the future about how the game would be handled like that? I think that's a smart basketball on their part, to be honest. You know, if we were up, you know, we do the same thing. I think we see every team around the league do the same thing. You know, it's, it's at the point where, you know, there's not enough time. You know, don't let them go get a three up because that's the only thing that can hurt you. You know, as long as you knock down your free throws and you're blessed, you know, and, and the game is yours. So, you know, it's, it's really not much you can do about it. You know, it sucks, you know, in the moment when, when it's going against you. But, I mean, I think that, that's just hoop at the end of the day. And, you know, I think the best way to, th to negate it is to not be in that position. So, you know, just down the stretch next time, you know, try to do a better job without fouling, um, you know, play more solid and, you know, hopefully, you know, we're not in that situation again. Questions for either of you. So, you guys are the, one of the tallest teams in the NBA, if not the tallest, and Portland's on the shorter end. I think Eubanks is probably the tallest guy, and he's 6'9". Um, yet they out-rebounded you guys uh, 46 to 38. Was there any talk during the game about you utilizing the size that y'all have to y'all's benefit and to y'all's advantage? Um, first of all, Eubanks is not 6'9". I was um, about to say 6'9". <laughs> <laughs> so um, but, no, I mean, we definitely didn't do our, didn't do our best job of, of rebounding, and uh, that's something we talked about, you know, the, the possession game before, before the game, you know. Um, we didn't have as many turnovers as they did, but um, you know, offensive rebounds the same thing, um, and especially against a player like like Laird, you want to limit him to one shot. And um, like I said earlier, when we get stops, get the rebound. That's when we're good at on offense. Get 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 a quick outlet and get some easy ones on the other end. Bon Jalen, this is for both you two. You guys been going through this win one lose one streak for you know dating back for almost a month now. Is there a feeling of just you know if we're trying to make the plan tournament like guys have spoken on, we need to start stringing together wins, string together, I guess a a streak so, to give ourselves a chance or to give you guys a chance. Uh, yeah, definitely. I think you know, I think we know to get in that position that we got to put a couple together, but. And you start looking too far ahead like that, you know, you start to lose the task at hand and, you know, you, you're looking too far in the future, you can only do one thing at a time, you know, win one game at a time. So um, I think it's just coming in locked in every night, you know, to who that opponent, to that, to who that opponent is, you know, whether we just lost or just won, uh, you know, just coming in and having business that night, you know, and doing that will put us in, put us in position to be right where we want to be. But, I mean, I think the further you look ahead and further you try to plan and, um, you know, not handle what's in the moment, you know, you're going to lose the moment, so.